In the world of gaming, what display you're playing on can make a massive difference in how much you enjoy your gaming experience. There's a myriad of options, from resolutions and refresh rates to response times and input latency. But in this video, I want to focus in on the resolution. My top picks these days are 1440p, that's 2560 by 1440, and 4K, that's 3840 by 2160. Remarkably, 4K and 1440p monitors often share the same price bracket, so it's a pretty fair comparison, and I'm sure makes your decision even more difficult. Let me walk you through the key differences and arm you with enough information to make an informed decision for yourself. The first point to cover is all about the visual fidelity. If you're the sort of person who enjoys how beautiful modern games have become, who enjoys the, the crisp visuals of a high resolution display, then pretty obviously 4K is for you. It's beautiful to look at, especially on a smaller display like a 27 or 32 inch panel with an unparalleled level of sharpness and fidelity. On larger displays like 42 inches and up, you will really want 4K to help cover the larger area in the display, although that's not to say that 1440p is some C-tier visual experience. Especially at 27 inches, 1440p looks perfectly crisp and sharp, and when sitting at appropriate viewing distance, your eyes really can't make out much of a difference. Still, it's hard to argue that 4K doesn't have the edge in visual quality. The next point is compatibility. While both of the most recent generation of consoles now support 1440p displays, the PS5 support of 1440p displays seems pretty tepid. You have to enable the 1440p setting in the menu system, and even then, at least as far as I'm aware, Variable refresh rate supports, better known as Adaptive Sync or AMD's FreeSync, isn't enabled when running at 1440p. I'm not entirely sure why or if this has been amended, please let me know in the comments down below if it has, but it does show you what Sony's priorities are here, and it means that you'd likely be better off with a 4K or 1080p display instead. For a PC, this isn't an issue, although you might find that 1440p displays are a better fit as even older HDMI versions can run 1440p up to at least 120 hz if not higher, whereas older HDMI versions might only be able to run 4K at 30 hz which is no good. It's also worth noting that a 4K monitor perfectly scales to 1080p, so one 1080p pixel gets split up onto four of the 4K pixels instead, whereas 1440p is not a native scale either way. If you end up viewing 1080p content, whether that's from a console that only runs at 1080p, or maybe even just cutscenes that have been pre-rendered at 1080p, a 4K monitor will generally look better than a 1440p monitor for that sort of content. Now, it isn't a massive problem, it's kind of hard to notice generally, but I thought it was something you should know before you splash your cash. The next and pretty major point is all about performance. Because 4K has more than double the number of pixels in a 1440p monitor, 125% more in fact, a 4K monitor is considerably harder to drive than a 1440p display. For a console, that means that games are likely to run at just 30fps, maybe 60fps at an absolute push, whereas at 1440p, they're often capable of running at 120fps. For a PC, that means on a 4K display, you're likely to either be running at a lower frame rate or we'll need to lower your settings to make your experience playable, which somewhat defeats the purpose of having a higher fidelity display. You are likely to need higher end hardware, namely a higher end graphics card than you would need for a 1440p monitor, especially if you want to enjoy the same quality settings. I also wanted to mention response times here, mostly as a point regarding TVs. See, a lot of gamers who do game at 4K do so on their main living room TV. That's of course fine, I mean, it's actually a great experience outright, 
But TVs aren't generally meant to be gaming displays. Unless it's an OLED panel, there is a very good chance that the response times, as in how long it takes for the display to change colors or just change what's on the screen, can take a really, really long time. That makes for a less than smooth, less than enjoyable gaming experience and can make it really hard to aim at anything fast moving, whether that's a, an enemy in a first person shooter or a racing line in a driving game. 1440p displays generally don't have that limitation as they're more than often marketed as gaming displays and therefore have been tuned and have overdrive modes to help with those slower panels. Of course, 4K gaming monitors also won't have those issues, but I thought it was worth mentioning. That also applies to the input latency, as in how long it takes between you starting an action and that action showing up on screen. TVs are notoriously bad for this, taking 100 to 300 milliseconds to start showing an action compared to a proper gaming monitor that can be as low as 1 or 2 milliseconds. That makes playing any latency sensitive games really difficult. Rocket League is my go-to for that, as your precisely timed inputs are what makes or breaks how well you perform in game. Even with an extra 10 to 20 milliseconds, I find it really difficult to hit the ball, <laughs> let alone line up shots and get real power behind the ball. I couldn't imagine having 100 to 300 milliseconds of input lag between me and the game. The other thing to mention here is the refresh rates. While well, ASUS just announced a 4K 240Hz OLED, and there are a couple of 4K 140Hz displays too, generally speaking, those are astronomically expensive and require equally expensive hardware to make use of it. 1440p, by comparison, requires considerably less power to push higher refresh rates, with 1440p 240Hz monitors being relatively affordable, especially by comparison. 1440p 144Hz and 165Hz monitors are incredibly common and much, much cheaper than basically any 4K 144Hz display, and it is a lot easier to drive 1440p at 144fps. In general, I'd say that if you have a PS5 or Xbox Series X, you'll probably want either a 1080p or a 4K display. The Xbox, I think, has better compatibility with 1440p, so that's still a perfectly good option, and you do get that sort of better visual fidelity at a pretty minimal performance cost, but for the PS5 in particular, I'd probably want to stay away. For a PC, I really like 1440p monitors and would happily recommend anyone with around a 60 or more like 70 class GPU or higher to dive in with a 1440p panel. It's a considerably better experience than 1440p without the drawbacks that 4K often comes with. If you plan on gaming in your living room, of course your TV is your best bet, make sure to switch on any game modes it might have, which often lowers the input latency a, a fair bit. And if you're still making a purchasing decision, OLEDs are just an amazing experience for gaming, even on a TV, or at least failing that, try and find one with a dedicated game mode. Both resolutions have their place, and I hope this video has been useful in filling you in on their differences. I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you pick up a 1440p or a 4K monitor? And just let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're interested in seeing some actual monitor reviews from me, I have a whole load of them on the channel already. I'll leave the playlist and the end cards when they pop up in a second. I'll also leave a couple of links to my favorite 1440p and 4K monitors in the description if you're interested. And if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also support the channel through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or load other ones that I designed myself, or you can even pick up an open source response time or latency testing tool uh, at osrtt.com if you're interested in being able to test displays like I do in my reviews. 
Otherwise, that's kind of it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.